Hey VC, this is Chris. I'm uh, back to do a video the other day. I was watching a John Coltrane 68 uh, video from several months ago, and he showed a Sugarcane Harris album that he had acquired. And uh, it might be the first time that I, he's ever shown anything that I've actually had. So that made me think, okay, I'm going to show some uh, other violinists, including Sugarcane Harris. Uh, that I've got. So um, I'll get to Sugarcane Harris in a moment, but I'll start with uh, uh, this band here FM Black Noise. Uh, this is 1978, I think. They were a Canadian band. Maybe uh, Cameron's Awena can. Uh, give us more details on this but uh, yeah. they were a three-piece band um, Cameron Hawkins on synthesizer bass piano and lead vocals Martin Deller on drums and percussion and synthesizer and Nash the Slash on electric violins mandolins glockenspiel vocals and effects so they were sort of a progressive band with a uh, violinist. And uh, then they put out this album, uh, 79 maybe. But uh, Nash the Slash had left and Ben Mink had been came in and replaced him with uh, basically the same instrumentation, violin and, and uh, mandolin. And then they had this album, which was you know, 84 maybe. Same lineup as the last album, City of Fear. Uh, Passport Records, Gatefold, last one was also Passport. And the first one was Visa, which looks like it was related to Passport. And then uh, Nash the Slash, who was the violinist and other instrumentation on volume, on the, the first one I showed, Black Noise. He put out this EP, Bedside Companion. So I think this is instrumental only. Uh, he performs, um, looks like all the instruments. Uh, this is on Cutthroat Records from 1978. So same year he left uh, FM, he put out this album, Cutthroat Records. One side's light one side's dark as far as the label goes and then uh, the following year he put out this album children of the night also on cutthroat uh, this includes uh, Cover of Dead Man's Curve, which was a, a Beach Boys, Jan and Dean song. Uh, Dopes on the Water, which was a take on uh, Smoke on the Water, the Deep Purple track. Uh, also had a cassette of... Uh, 
of that album. Children of the Night. Uh, then he put out another EP, Decomposing. On uh, Cutthroat, this is 1981. Mini album, playable at any speed. Uh, the first EP he had was a 45. This one is any speed you want. So if you want it slow, you want it fast. Yeah, I think this is also instrumental, so it doesn't matter too much what speed you play it at. And then, last one I have in, of him, You Thought You Were Normal. Another album on Cutthroat. Uh, this is 1982. So this is... Uh, Nash the Slash produce, uh, performing almost everything. Daniel Lanois has something to do with one of the tracks, but otherwise it's Mr. Slash uh, doing everything. And then to switch to another uh, violinist, Papa John Creech. Now, he was in uh, Jefferson Airplane before he did the solo album. So I think the first one he was with Airplane was in uh, was Bark, 1971. Uh, this one is missing the uh, paper bag cover. On the grunt label, the uh, inner sleeve is sort of a paper bag, but I forget what I did with the paper bag if I if it just got fell apart and I threw it away or what. But um, he was also on uh, Long John Silver, 1972. And 30 Seconds Over Winterland, 1974. Also on Grunt. And then his first album was Papa John Creech, also on Grunt. He's on violin and he's got support from various... Uh, Grateful Dead member. I mean, uh, Jerry Garcia is on one track. Uh, Jefferson Airplane members are on several tracks, or maybe Hot Tuna members, however you want to describe them. So this one's pretty good. Grunt. That was '71. This one, maybe 72, Papa John Creech, Filthy, Zulu is his backing band, so I don't think it's quite as strong as the, uh, the first one, which had other people on it, but Gatefold, there's the band Zulu. And then he did another one, which was 74. Papa John Creech and Zulu. On Grunt. And this is similar to the last one. It's got you know, pretty much the same backing band. So he sings on some of the songs, plays violin on all of them. 
and we uh, get to you know what triggered this uh, video. Sugar Don Sugarcane Harris. This is the first one of the three I have on. They're all on MPS. Fiddler on the Rock. This is basically uh, Sugarcane Harris with uh, a version of Canned Heat backing him up. Gatefold 19. I think this is 71. Or 72. 72. Um, Sugarcane Harris, uh, Harvey Mandel on guitar, Larry Taylor bass, Paul Lagos on drums, on BA, BSF. MPS, I meant. MPS. So this is sort of, uh, a rock album with a fiddle as or violin as one of the main instruments. With him doing Sugarcane Harris doing vocals, and then more of the same. A cup full of dreams, 1970. I think this is 73. Still on MPS, and then uh, got the blues. Don Sugar Kane Harris live at the Berlin Jazz Festival. Now he's got uh, jazz musicians backing him up. Got so. Uh, Volker Kriegel, Serge Riptal, Wolfgang Downer, Neville Whitehead, and Robert Wyatt. Nineteen seventy three. And then to uh, another band, The Flock. This has uh, Jerry Goodman as the violinist on it. So these early ones, this is 69, I think, on uh, Columbia. Horns, violin, guitar, bass, you know, wider range of instrumentation, so jazz rock or progressive rock. That was their first album, their second album, Dinosaur Swamps. Or more of the same. Uh, gatefold. Jerry Goodman. Columbia. Uh, the third album, Jerry Goodman had left. So they didn't have a violinist on this, but this is uh, 1975, I think, on Mercury. So they were more of just a normal rock band by that point. Uh, Jerry Goodman went on. He was with John... Jan Hammer on this one, like children. So sort of a jazz fusion album. 
this was on uh, Nemperer. Hard to get any details on that. It's so uh, dark. Nineteen seventy four, and then he went on and did some solo albums uh, on the future of aviation. Nineteen seventy eight, no, nineteen eighty five. So Jerry Goodman with the. Uh, some backing, so sort of a progressive album. Uh, this is on uh, private music, as were his next two. So, private. And then uh, Ariel. Private music and it's alive. 19, uh, 1988. And before Jerry Goodman went on to the after flock and before he went solo. Uh, he was with uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra. I think this was the last album he was on, Birds of Fire, which was 1973 on Columbia. And then um, 1975, maybe. Visions of Emerald Beyond. Jerry Goodman had left, still on Columbia. And so they had replaced him with a, a string trio, which included Steve Kindler. And then Steve Kindler went on to do some solo albums. This one is called Automatic Writing. So this is getting uh, towards a, a new age sound, or at least it was a, you know, uh, it was not a, a, a non-harsh sound, soothing, but you know, violin, nineteen eighty. Five on uh, Global Pacific. And then he did a, another album after that, also on Global Pacific. Dolphin Smiles. This is with uh, Tasia Bell on guitar. But the music isn't that much different in uh, tone. Global Pacific. And an, another uh, in the list of... Uh, Violinist Jean Luc Ponte from 1969, uh, live at Dante's. Dante's with an O rather than an A. Uh, this is on uh, Blue Note Classic. It says these are previously unreleased uh, recordings from uh, 1969. Dante's North uh, Hollywood, California. 
So George Duke on piano, John Hurd, Al Chechi on drums. And then the following year, or less than a year, 1970, uh, King Kong, music of Frank Zappa. This is on uh, Liberty Records, pressed in uh, England. Liberty, uh, George Duke is on majority of this also, composed and arranged by Frank Zappa. And then this one from a few years later, I forget what year it is, John Luc Ponte, Open Mind. I think George Duke is still uh, assisting on this, Atlantic. John Luke Pont. And then uh, Michael Urbaniak, Polish uh, violinist, 1972, no, not, May 1973, Constellation, in concert. So he's supported by uh, Ursula Dudziak, Wojciech. Kerouac, Czechoslaw, Bartowski, and Adam Makowitz. This is on uh, Musa. Yeah. The Musa label. And then I think the next year or sometime soon after that, Michael Urbaniak group. I don't know if that's uh, Paratyphus or Paratyphus B. So this is on, looks like a fried egg symbol. Side B is uh, one long track and one short track. Uh, I think this one is something similar. Uh, side A is one long track and one short track. And then uh, the third album, which was, uh, those are both sort of jazz, jazz fusion. This one, uh, Ecstasy, Michael Urbaniak. 1980 something. This is just sort of uh, adult contemporary or uh, dance oriented. Michael Urbaniak on the Marlin label. And then uh, last two violinists, uh, Daryl Way, he was in Curved Air, and then this was the group afterwards, Daryl Way's Wolf, this is 1972, Canis Lupus is the name of the album. So. 
this is a gatefold. This is on Durham label. Nineteen seventy three. So this is sort of rock or uh, sounding. Then you need this one. Daryl Way's Wolf. Uh, um, this is on the London label. This is uh, less rock. Still gets violin on it. And then he did a solo album on Island in the late 70s. Concerto for electric violin. Uh, so he did the violin. Uh, Francis Monkman provided the uh, synthesized orchestra. Francis Monkman was uh, bandmate in Curved Air. Keyboard player. Uh, this is you know, on island. And uh, curved air, love child. So, besides uh, Daryl Way, uh, I think Eddie Jobson was uh, in the band as a violinist. I forget which this one is. The cassette version. And then the final uh, one to show. David Laflame. He was in uh, It's a Beautiful Day. So this is a nice uh, embossed cover. 1976. He starts out with two uh, Beautiful Day songs that he had written, but still a good uh, Good touchstone for this album, uh, White Bird and Hot Summer Day, and then he gets into some newer compositions, which uh, seems like the album sort of tapers off when he gets into those newer ones, you know, more adult contemporary stuff. This is on the Amherst label. Prior to uh, It's a Beautiful Day, he was in a band called Orchestra, which was uh, uh, had funky spelling, O-K-U-S-T-R-A something, rather than uh, the normal orchestra spelling, but they were more uh, rock-oriented or progressive than It's a Beautiful Day, and then he went solo after this after that and this is one of his albums so that was my uh, give me approximately 10 jazz violinists or uh, no just violinists some of them are jazz some of them are rock some of them are unclassifiable so thanks for watching